I was just going to interrupt you because, um, as the polls are showing today, uh, this issue has caused a backlash among male voters. We've got a question on this from Oliver Damien. Divide and rule. It worked for Caesar and Napoleon, but it's killing Australian politics. Do you think it's about time that politicians just focus on their job of nation building instead of pandering to the gender and uh, prejudices of the masses to get a few upticks in polls, opinion uh, polls? Can I just say in responding to your question, um, I feel as a Labor woman that the Prime Minister has a responsibility to talk about the rights of women and the progress that's made. All parties do when they're proud of the progress they made and it's the right conversation to be having at this point in time. I was more concerned about the nature of commentary because it fell into that category of, of denigration, of, of seizing on something small, a line within her speech and flaring it up in the characteristic and the texture of politics that um, carries all of that negativity. So I think it was more in the, the telling of the story post the speech rather than any ill motivation on behalf of Julia Gillard. We've, um, I was going to interrupt there because um, among, a lot of people sent questions on this topic. Among them was a web question. Why doesn't the Labor Party see that most men think it is anti-men? Most men are profoundly offended because Julia Gillard is a PM for women only. Well, I think our history shows that that's not the case. I mean, of course, um, you know, feminist issues, women's issues are not just men's issues. They're society's issues. And I think a whole history, generations of great work by, by women and men activists uh, have changed the society for a better place. This is what I'm immensely but you know, here's, proud here's of. Here's the point. In pure political terms, you seem to be losing male voters. Paul Kelly. I think Julie Gillard's speech last week was a tragic political blunder. I couldn't believe it when she gave that speech. Uh, I felt at the time it could be a potential disaster for her. We have a poll that comes out this morning showing that among men, uh, the support for the Labor Party in terms of the primary vote is now down to 24%. It's incredible. Now, I understood the misogyny speech last October, but I felt it was a mistake. I recognised that it was an iconic event which galvanised a lot of women, a lot of feminists, and put a lot of energy behind Julia Gillard. But if we look back on that speech now, I don't think it's assisted the Prime Minister at all. What happened last week was we knew Julia Gillard's leadership was in trouble. This was a prepared speech by the Prime Minister. She put abortion on the table as an issue. Frankly, I don't think it's an issue. It hasn't been in the media. There are no plans on either side of politics to make abortion an issue. And I think in that sense, her speech was seen to be divisive, and I think this has been one of the problems with the Gillard government. It seemed to be too divisive a government, and it looked again as though she was creating a diversion. The feminists were correct. The feminists came out and said, this is too much a tactic, this is clumsy, this is a manipulation of the issue for attempted political gain. I think they were right, and the Prime Minister has paid a ferocious penalty. Robert Mann. And I'd like to revisit things that Paul was saying, but in a slightly different way. I, I think that the misogyny speech that Julie Gillard, I think, made spontaneously um, when something unexpected happened in the parliament, I think undoubtedly will be regarded as her best moment. Um, I think it was a wonderful speech. I th it, 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 women across the world recognise that speaking about that element of the culture with that degree of passion and precision was a great moment. I think the reason that the, I, I thought the misogyny speech last week uh, was a, a mistake, um, uh, or the, the women, the, the blue tie speech, I suppose it'll be known as, was a mistake because it seemed like normal politics, manipulation, opportunism, uh, what I think it was Simon Crane said, tinier for politics. I think it was, I, I do think it was ill-advised. But I, there's one thing I do want to say. Um, in my view, the biggest mistake made by a politician I most admire in Australia, Paul Keating, was to allow the Murdoch press to have uh, the kind of control it has over the way we look at things. And I do think the, the uh, 
surprise to Paul. And, and I, I, um, I do think that the way in which a sort of line emerges and an outrage that abortion is raised and so on and so forth, everyone says the same thing. I think we don't realise how much that is uh, what's happened to this country, that, that, that the picture we're getting of the world is coming through uh, yeah. a, a, a much larger control over the press well, than that, is healthy. That's, that's crazy. Robert, that's that's just, just, just saying vote. that just you've got a, a big problem because a whole heap of people choose to buy a paper. Well, if they choose to buy a paper, it's because they actually like what's in it. If they didn't like what was in it, they wouldn't buy it. You can't say, I blame that media stable there's because no, people enjoy no, reading it. There's no Western country or civilised country that has anything like this uh, well, monopoly it, of a single figure who's a highly ideological figure. It, I don't think we realise... It's not our fault if, the, if alternate venues are not popular. Well, most countries just don't allow one corporation to own 60 or 70%. So what do we do? Do we, just, do we just sort of segment out and say, oh, well, even though nobody wants to buy all these things, we're going to demand I, I, that they, I, I, demand Barn, that they Barnaby, buy Barnaby, if someone else had bought the... Herald and Weekly Times in the mid 80s, people would still be reading those newspapers. I don't think that's Okay, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go. I don't think people are that I'd stupid. like to round this section off by hearing from uh, Paul Kelly on this issue, since you are representing News Limited tonight. Uh, well, I, I, think Rob has, <laughs> <laughs> I think Rob has conflated a lot of issues here. Um, if, we, if we go back to what happened last week, um, uh, there's no conspiracy here. I mean, individual papers just responded. Uh, in terms of what happened on the day. Individual journalists were making their own assessments and some were more critical than others. But the point about this is the Labor Party was gobsmacked. There were Labor MPs who couldn't believe what the Prime Minister had said. Now, forget about the Murdoch press. I mean, what do we I think explain... Well, hang on. <laughs> well, what do we think explain should. the public... Maybe you should. Now, yeah. We, have to be, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful in this country about creating this idea that everything's a conspiracy. Now, if we look at the public opinion poll published in the Fairfax media about the events of last week, I think it demonstrates fairly clearly that the Australian public reacted very badly to Julia Gillard. Now, I think it's a mistake for the Labor Party or for, or for, or for anybody else to turn this around and start saying, ha ha. This was a Murdoch conspiracy. I mean, no I think that is... That. All right, well, well I thought you were close. wrong. No, I, 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 well, in that case, I stand corrected. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is that, that, that because of the Murdoch control, people sing the same tune too much in this country. I'm very pleased that The Guardian online is, is opening because we're going to well, get so every, well, we, we get every, every morning we're going to get very well. a powerful different interpretation of the nation. Well, Robert, I'm going to interrupt you there because um, this is not the voice, but you did get a chance to sing your own tune on the ABC 